Hello, my loyal subjects, and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about how to modify our built-in custom for now nonsense to be a little bit easier to use. So previously we used index of refraction. Um, this is technically the physical correct way, physically correct way of dealing with things, but it doesn't give a huge amount of artistic control, and we can sacrifice a little bit of physical accuracy to make something a little bit more consistent and a little bit more believable and uh, just make it funner to work with. So we can actually have yeah, this specular setting. This is a setting that's very common in the games industry. Um, what it actually does, it allows you to define at a facing angle how bright your reflection is. This is really nice because you can raise it up to one, in which case it's very, very bright, and you can drop it down to zero where it's there's no facing reflection. This makes it really easy to handle a lot of uh, effects. First of all, it's a little bit more intuitive <clears throat> for a lot of people. And, uh, because you can do things like 3% or 4% for, uh, you know, kind of a standard material. But then you can, uh, and roughness should still be your main control. High roughness still dims down the reflection. But, uh, this gives us a bit more control, even if technically this does make the Fresnel curve not 100% accurate. It's still, this is close to what most game engines will have, um, technically a bit more accurate than that. Um, still pretty useful, and plus it makes your whole workflow just a lot easier. Um, an example of this would be with metallics. So one of the things about metallics is that when you use this method, you can actually use the color here. First of all, you don't have an index of refraction value, um, or a specular for that matter, because this is the specular. Um, this color is the specular value, which makes it so much easier, and the colors will be closer to what you actually expect them to be. So anyway. Yeah, it's pretty neat on the scale of things. I really like it. And, uh, yeah. So with that in mind, let's dive in and actually try to craft this. Um, we're going to be modifying the... I'm just going to actually start from scratch, go through making a custom for now node, just so that uh, people can see the process. I'm going to go through it relatively quickly, as I've already done a tutorial on how to do the rough for now thing, and then we're going to talk about extending it so that it can use the specular property. So without further ado, let's dive in. So now let's grab a Fresnel node, let's hit Control G to group it. I'm just punching through this kind of rough Fresnel stage and uh, where we're actually going to make a more physically accurate Fresnel node. We'll go to Color Mix because you can do this on vectors. I'm actually going to preview this real quick. Um, you'll see we get these weird blocky glitches. The reason for this is that uh, it's forgetting that this is a surface direction, as I've mentioned. I'm going to set this slider to zero just because that's what I want the default to be. Um, and then I'm going to expose it. This will be our roughness value. So we have a lovely little slider. I'm going to name it roughness. And then what we need is we're going to need a geometry node, which I'm just going to input. And you can actually hit a shortcut key. You'll see numbers uh, or letters get underscored in the names of things. That's actually the shortcut key for it. So while I'm mousing over this menu, you can see it's under uh, the G in geometry is underscored. That means if I have the G key, it spawns a geometry node. Anyway, so I'm going to hook up incoming to that. It's still going to be glitchy. And the reason being is that it doesn't think this, even though it's called normal, because it's not connected to a surface direction, it's connected to a color, it doesn't realize it's a surface direction. Um, because vectors are technically just an XYZ coordinate, so it's kind of confused. We can hint at it by going to vector bump, which is a, this is a surface direction. Um, you know, it knows that it is. So if we plug this in, and then plug this in here, and I'm just going to drop the strength down to zero, and all that does is basically um, remind Blender that that is the surface direction and give us the proper effect. So what it's doing is it's saying uh, the incoming direction, by the way, is you know basically uh, the direction the light's coming from. So if we say it's facing the direction the light's coming from more and more and more, gives us our nice little as roughness increases, the reflections go away kind of thing. Uh, so anyway, this is our standard physically based for now as I explained in my physically based Fresnel video, um, which I'll probably throw an annotation of on the screen, that or I'll forget, in which case yell at me in the description until I actually do, because um, I won't remember it. So anyway, um, I'm gonna be putting a little dot before things because technically I'm working in a product that already has all this stuff, I'm just making tutorial versions. So anyway, um, 
I'm going to click a little F to save it. So anyway, you customize this, and now we want to improve it. Because as nice as this is, really on the scale of things, could be better. Um, you have to kind of tweak this index or refraction all the time. It creates these large sweeping changes. It's kind of not super intuitive. It's a very scientific measurement, but it's not very... Like, a lot of the values out there are incorrect, the ones you find on websites. It's just, it's not super easy to find index or refraction values. And honestly, the physical accuracy you get from using this over something like specular is not much. So, I'm just gonna... <clears throat> I'm just gonna quickly minimize all this. I'm gonna hit Control H. Uh, this will hide any unconnected inputs to something. Lovely little... Uh, if you want to reveal them again, just hit Control H again. It's just a toggle. It'll just hide anything that isn't connected, which is very, very useful. So here we've got this. This is our standard Fresnel, and um, if we remember, this is our rough surface direction that we want to use. So, next, I'm going to need another Fresnel node. Now the reason for this is that I need the... Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing the lowest reflection. We already know it goes up to 100%, but what we need to do is do some math magic to actually remove this lowest reflection. Uh, so when we're looking at it dead on, this isn't black, it's just very, very dark gray, and that means there's a little bit of reflection dead on. This is what we want control over. So we want it to go from absolute black to absolute white, and then we can use a color mix to control it, which is makes just your whole life a whole lot easier. So anyway, uh, one of the ways we can do this is simply by taking geometry incoming and plugging it into a Fresnel node. Um, and I'll just expose the index of refraction for... Uh, goodness's sake, but basically uh, if I expose this, you can see this is the lowest reflectivity. It's saying, hey, it's hitting dead on. So that's the lowest reflectivity of the Fresnel. That's information that we can use, and we're gonna dive into some math here. So math-wise, um, what this actually is, and I'm just gonna throw down a comment real quick, frame, and I'm just gonna write this out ahead of time. So, if you're not familiar with how to floor, um, or uh, how to floor a value, basically what we're going to be doing is uh, Fresnel minus F0. F0 in this case is our lowest reflectivity. When we're looking at it dead on, this is the lowest um, Fresnel value, and that's referred to as F0, the lowest value. Um, it's your facing reflection. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to label this as F0, so we have a little bit clearer view. So, we want to first subtract F0. Now, the problem is, this will also cut it off of the bright areas, which we don't want. We want to leave those at 1. And there's a simple way we can do this. Um, we can actually divide it. Um, so we can actually, like, first of all, for now, minus F0. And then, divided by... Um, 1 minus F0. So that's our little equation here. Um, and if you didn't understand that, I'm not surprised. It took me quite a while to wrap my head around it, but because uh, I am terrible at math, which is not good when you're a programmer. But uh, anyway, so what we're actually going to be doing is, first of all, let's actually observe this because, again, we're visual. We're visual people. We're artists. We can look at things visually. So it's for now minus F0. Now you'll notice our center is now absolutely black. We can test this, it goes down to absolute zero. Now the downside is that if I were to expose this, for example, you can see actually the edge reflection does get dimmer. So we need to bring that back up. And anything divided by itself is one, right? So what is this brightest reflection right now? Well, it, it was one before we subtracted. So it's 1, so now, after the subtraction, it's 1 minus F0. That's actually what we have. So let's add another subtract node, or in this case, I'm just going to duplicate it. And we'll say 1 minus F0. This is also how colors are inverted, by the way, it's just 1 minus. It's a lovely little math equation. And then our final little bit is divide, and divide it by itself. So if we look at this, the raw version, which has a slightly dimmer edge reflection, and then get slightly brighter around the edges. Slight bit of physical accuracy. Honestly, you could probably get away with just the subtract. But uh, again, I personally, I like that little extra kick right there. It's just so shiny. So anyway, that's about all we need. That really is about all we need. 
The next thing I actually want to cover is just the metallics. Uh, the metallics is relatively easy. I'm just going to throw this up here. Um, so the metallics thing, of course, for those who didn't see the uh, physically based metallics tutorial, first of all, go watch it. Uh, second of all, it's basically just adding the rim shading for metals. Metals can have a rim shading. Again, most game engines don't model this, so if you're just trying to make a game engine, this is completely pointless to you. But let's just throw that together real quick while we're here, while we're dicking around in uh, Blender. So first of all, we're going to need a layer weight node, because it has this lovely little facing value. I'm just going to expose that real quick. I'm going to name this Fresnel. I'm going to name my outputs. I like naming my outputs. And metallic uh, rim, or just, what we'll just call it rim. Rim shading. Anyway, so I'm trying to remember what the math that I used was. Uh, let's see. Power 2.5, I want to say. That might be wrong. Anyway, uh, we'll clamp it for good measure. Clamp it to 0 and 1. And we need to use this rough normal, because of course, as roughness goes up, uh, we want to get rid of that rim reflection with everything else. So, boom, as the roughness goes up. Now, one of the things about this is that I still have an index of refraction value. If you want to expose that, you totally can, and there's no reason that you can't expose that. But it's one of those tiny details. We've just minimized index or refraction's impact. Well, the only thing that's really going to change with index or refraction now, and you'll see this if I go into Fresnel, is really the how sharp the edge reflections are. And that's such a minor variance. Um, it honestly doesn't change that much. And honestly, it kind of loops back on itself a lot. Honestly, what you should probably be doing is about 1.45 and then just leaving it at that. Um, not exactly physically accurate, but it's a good workflow. And if you're trying to match games, which again is kind of hard to do in most cases, uh, this won't give you just exact game shading, but it uh, will get you a little bit closer. In my case, I just like to have a value of 1.45 and then just hit Control X to get rid of my relay in this case. But yeah. I, I just hide the index of refraction value and just have a little value here. And for good measure, I'll label it as index of refraction. But uh, yeah, there's our lovely little fancy Super Fresnel node. Um, again, this is a bit more of a laid back tutorial right now, mostly because I'm trying to get back into making tutorials and uh, trying to produce them on a more regular basis, which means less slides, because the slides take quite a while to make but uh, and find. But anyway, so. Uh, yeah, this is our lovely little Fresnel node now. Um, now the way you use it is by going to color, mix, and then using this as the factor. Mixing from whatever specular value you want, like red, to white. And we can easily go in and um, could just plug this into a glossy shader if we wanted. And now we have a game metallic shader. And yeah. So I could, for example, make this black, and you'll see that it's just a kind of void of light in the center. But I could also make it, like, white. And this will mean that it matches most of the measured values you see in actual game, um, a lot of the game lookup charts and stuff that are kind of measured from a physical surface. It's just, it's such a nice workflow. It's much cleaner. Uh, even if it does sacrifice a little bit of that Fresnel curve accuracy, it's totally worth it, in my opinion. And uh, I just, I like the workflow a lot better. So anyway, and then of course if we um, add a little bit of roughness, we can get quite a lot in terms of cool effects. So for example, if I were to add a little bit of red here, and then add a reflection over it, and the reflection is pretty straightforward. I mean, I didn't really change that much for the reflection. Um, I just went in and uh, you can see it just uses our Fresnel um, and plugs it in here just to a lovely little color mix with our specular so that's how I did it metallics was pretty much the same thing it's just color mix between for rim shading and then color mix for for now really not that much changed on the scale of things but uh, yeah so hopefully that has made your workflow a little bit easier and now you can with gusto dive in and uh, use your lovely little Fresnel skills and whatnot to actually create some pretty awesome stuff and actually use specular maps and whatnot and have fun with your lovely little artist tool now. So we can make this brighter. 
make it rough, etc. It still uh, preserves that kind of low uh, specularity thing. Just gives you a ton of control. And uh, yeah. Hopefully you have enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I don't know, maybe subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. I'm going to be posting more stuff and uh, also some non-Blender stuff probably if I if the recordings go well. Um, yeah, so peace out. Fulufthahen. Maybe tell some friends if you think they would be interested. And uh, yeah, peace out. Make cool Blender shit.